great. This piece is almost done. 91. I've been printing for about a day and a half now, doing some designing. So I realized that I could actually get some extra pieces. I could actually get a magnet inside of the new coil. Another piece being printed. And uh, basically, I can get a two inch square magnet inside my pipe. So, Richard's coil, the silver one, or the uh, copper colored one, um, it basically doesn't quite have a hole in it. You could take the ends off and produce the same thing, but right now it doesn't, it's not accessible like that. So, I figured out that I could get a two inch square magnet on the inside of this thing, and it produces the effect that I'm looking for as far as um, the, how much induction is going on. The problem is, is I've got this flange right here. So, I've got to be able to get this inside there, get all the pieces on there. Here's the uh, bearings, and I machined down one of these pulleys, looked like this, and machined it down and put the uh, set screw right there because I got to be able to get this through that flange. Sorry, a bad footage there. Got some small bearings, stuff I had laying around, um, some stainless steel shaft from parts I've taken apart, and uh, yeah. So basically this allows me to get this two inch magnet inside of this hole, all right? So, bad lighting again. Here's the uh, here's the end piece that goes on there. This is going to go in the hole. Now the thing is, is I had to figure out a way to hold everything in place. So these guys actually snap on there like that, but they can't be put in up here. They got to be put in in the hole. So once I get it in there, then I can actually put it in there. Um, and then I'm actually going to take fishing string. Okay, and I'm going to. Instead of gluing this on here, I'm going to take fishing string, and I made slots in these. These are actually threaded. There's already a set screw in that one, um, and to uh, set on my little shaft. But I'm going to actually take fishing string and hook it on those edges right there, and wrap it around this guy just to hold it in place. Um, I really don't want to glue them on there, and I don't think this is PLA. I don't think it sticks very well. Um, but with this magnet inside this coil, spinning it with a piece of tape on it and letting it fall through the coil. That's the only way I could do it. I could induce up to 15,000 volts. That's a lot. So Richard's coil doesn't have the uh, hole big enough here to do what I want, or to do this, I should say. Oh, it's done. So, oh, just another, another experiment. Yeah, I'm running in circles on trying different things um, for different reasons due to the geometry of the coil and what I have at my disposal. Um, so the relay circuit and the controller and um, the encoder wheel all right on this magnet we're gonna have to figure out how to uh, to use similar things and so what I've done is I've actually got a belt right and that pulley fits on the magnet and this is a, uh, a timing belt of course and so that belt fits in there just like that and fits on the end of this and I'll show you how that looks when it's all assembled but uh, yeah so far so good and we'll get this thing rocking and rolling real soon and even though the magnet is smaller um, really it's actually a lot better because the induction isn't that bad um, or I should say it's a lot better than that magnet on the outside. So even though the outside magnet is bigger, this thing really is in such close proximity and it's in the middle. So you gotta remember, if you got the coil here and the coil here, you got two sides being induced, where if the coil is here, you only get one side and you get the cancellation of the other side. So in this instance, you actually get both and you get a better interaction between the coil and the magnet, um, which is what I really I think that that's a much better way for doing what I want to do, which is um, playing around with the induction effect of this system. And so we'll go from there. So I'll show you what it looks like assembled and we'll put it in there and do a few experiments. Oh, look at those. Look at those little bushings. 
I think they're two layers thin. Those are bushings for the, uh, look at that. Little bushings for those, the um, little bearings that I got on there. All right, so here's the new apparatus so that I can get a magnet inside of this, okay? So I've got a two inch neodymium magnet. I don't want to get too close. I'll zoom in so you can see what it looks like. So I took fishing string, all right, and I wrapped it around the edges. I made these slots for that. Wrapped it all the way around. Then that way I didn't have to glue these on here. And then I came back and put little pieces on here to hold this in place. And uh, then I got a belt, all right, going up to the top. And then I can move this up and down to get the belt tight. All right. Now it's timed, so the gears out here are in sync with the direction that the magnet is down there. Now this thing barely fits in here, it's got to fit in there just like that. And even with it, well actually it goes this way, even with it sitting in there, it still hits the edges. Okay. Um, and so what I did to fix this problem is um, I made these little these little pieces two different sizes all right and they snap on the fiberglass rod and they hold right inside the pipe diameter now the problem is is I put a flange on the outside of here which means the inside pipe is four inches however the inside of this little flange is to fit a three inch pipe so in order to make this actually work I have to put it in there, okay, put it in there and then I'm getting over that lip. So I've designed this so that I can do exactly that. I can actually put this in the hole, okay, there's a set screw by the way holding the shaft in on the inside. So I can put this in the hole. All right, I've got this board here set already the right height. All right, now I can take these little snap ring, or the snap holders. All right, and I can actually get inside the pipe and snap them on there. And then that holds the system away from there at just the right distance. So let me see if I can get the rest of them in there and kind of show you what I got. All right, I got it in there. It is a very tight fit. Um, so there's a spark gap right here. It's connected to this 2000 volt capacitor. Uh, the gap is about 16th of an inch. So I'm not spinning it very fast and it's completely jumping that arc. That's a pretty, pretty, or that gap, that's a pretty big, uh, pretty good gap. Turn the lights off so you can see it better. So, yes, uh, it produces a ridiculously large voltage now compared to when it was on the outside. Very, very high. Alright, so you can see on the screen here, spinning it at about 260 RPM, which isn't that fast. Um, the voltage down at the bottom you can see here is about 6.76 thousand volts peak to peak. This is one of the spark discharges. Um, I'm going to open up the gap and spin it slightly faster and we'll see see what that looks like. So off the charts. It's really uh really not that much faster. See what it really is. Very little bit, but not much. 
So yeah, that's uh, that's some pretty pretty intense voltages right there. So that was that was the point of putting the magnet inside. So that's about 10,000 volts. Uh, it goes off the chart over there. Let's go over just a little bit. So those are some pretty big spikes. Um, one. 143 milliseconds so that's roughly uh, 419 RPM so you don't have to spin it very fast I'll actually go even slower just to see see what it is as a snail's pace All right. All these kind of inconsistent. Five hundred, so thirty, and the voltage there is uh, well above a thousand. It's fourteen hundred. When the when you spin the big magnet next to the side of it I can get about 700 uh, volts at a pretty high RPM so this is a tremendously better flux coupled system you can see what it looks like sitting in there works pretty well so we'll see you guys during the tests of this guy just kind of recording some stuff as I'm doing it peace out alright quick Update, I did get this done, and uh, oh, let me use my flashlight, you can see down in there, the magnet is in there, and it does all fit in there nicely, and I can turn it from the outside, and I have a spark gap here, I don't know, what is that, you can see what size my finger is, pretty good size gap, so I'm going to spin this, I'm going to let my buddy here, Brandon, hold the camera, it should focus in a second, and uh, just get both. So I'm going to just spin this thing by hand and see, see if we can jump that gap. This is just across the coil. That's it. So that is not a very high RPM. Now get real close to that. You can get about this far away and let it focus. There we go. Let it focus on there. All right, here we go. Oh, sorry. I want the background on camera. Yeah, that's good. All right, cool. Here we go. I could probably go more on that gap, but um, I'm a little concerned about doing that, primarily because <laughs> I don't know how good the insulation is. I mean, you can do the math. How big is that? There's your reference. Pretty good size gap. Okay, well, anyway, and also on a 9-volt battery... Uh, I cannot spin this. I cannot turn this by hand with just a 9 volt battery applied to this coil. That's ridiculous. All right, there's a short update. Pretty sweet.